Michael Jackson, I be spazzing, making moves. Woo. Been to jail, did my time, learned to pay my dues. Uh. I was active in that cell with a heavy point to prove. I oh. wasn't doing it for the fame, we was dying over rules. Yep. Thugging in the streets, not banging for these views. I could never be a sucker, that's the loudest in the room. Get crowns from my hood, a couple made the news. I did time for my hood, and now they want me in the tomb. Wow. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, as you seen from the thumbnail, I'm going to display a lot of pictures across the screen. A particular gang war that's going on on the SNY has been going on since, man, 2012. We're talking about a war that consistently goes on year after year after year on different SNY yards and different prisons. One, one year is going to kick off in Kern Valley and there's going to be a bloody war for a good year and a year and a half. Then those individuals are going to transfer to another facility, instigate the situation over there. Then it's going to kick off over there. Because usually uh, if a gang war happens in Tehachapi and their brothers hear about it in Kern Valley or in Salinas Valley or in Pleasant Valley, it's a 50-50 chance that it might kick off there as well. They might follow suit. It all depends on the circumstances of why the war took place, what are the details, the people that started it, are they still around, are they still solid, or did they lock it up because the bloodshed was too severe, too gruesome for them to withstand. That It all factors in. Most of the time, the policy on the SNY for a very long time, even before I showed up, was if it kicked off in Kern Valley, that's Kern Valley's problem. It don't transfer over here. Sometimes I've seen certain gang members come from that facility where it was kicking off, show up at our facilities and be like, hey, bro, we got to kick it off. Like, nah, hold on, bro, hold on, don't come over here messing up our program, bro. We got phones, man, we got dope, man, we got homies balling right now, we got homies going to visit. Don't come disturb our peace, bro, with that drama over there. They can go to war and they can hash it out, they can kill each other and, you know, remain at peace afterwards. That's how it usually works. But this one right here, they've been kicking it off with each other since I first told the story on why it kicked off, the first initial gang war. It was over a 2 5 for being drunk, didn't like the Zapatistas, didn't even like that the Zapatistas even started a movement, and they got big too fast to them to even combat and shut it down. Because there's always been small little groups that try to start themselves up just as a little simple brotherhood to stick with each other. 2 5 come in, just start smacking them down like, nope, you're not. We're the only biggest faction on here. So when I seen these pictures and I seen the story behind it, you know, I did my questionnaires, I asked my questions, tried to get a little bit more information than... Just a typical video. Once I got the details, I kind of seen why the homie didn't want me to put it out. It's a little bit more deeper than that. So I said, you know what? I'm going to display this pictures and I'm going to talk about something in particular while showing you guys, you know, what the SNYs look like. So right here in the beginning, these are going to be the Sabatistas that are actually the victims in this case, which is very rare. I've spoke about it numerous times on my YouTube channel. The Zapatistas usually are the aggressors because a lot of them go in there understanding the policy that if you have life, you cannot do nothing else but use a banger. That is your primary objective. But I've seen so many Zapatistas that even had dates, three years, five year dates, still cutting their lockers, still making metal, still making shanks. And they'll go at it, bro. They'll, they'll, they'll truck off that date just to put it down for the organization. Now, I know what people are asking. How can these dudes become so violent? But be on the SNY. And it's, you know, that's a watered down statement. So many times I hear everybody comes up with the same, the same question, the same, it's like a, a rhetorical question. Oh, bro, how these fools weren't acting violent on the main line, but they want to act over here. Bro, a man's a man. You put a man in a position to become violent, he's going to become violent. Main line doesn't make you a violent killer, bro. Because there's a lot of people on that main line. There's a lot of people that parole from the main lines who ain't never used a banger, who ain't never shed in no blood, who's never been in no riots, but walk around saying, I'm active, I'm willing to use a weapon, I'm willing to put in work for the big homies. They say that narrative a lot. I'm not knocking them down, I'm not taking the sense of a man, their pride of a, as a man, from them. But there's a lot of people that will woof them same tickets. All oh, these dudes will come over, go with SNY, they're so violent, but they weren't willing to put in work. A lot of these dudes that are on SNY have put in work on the main lines. I've seen people, I've, I've done background checks on people, people have shared their stories with me. They just got tired of the politics and I can't justify that no more, any longer, why people go to the SNY from the main lines. I've done it as many times as I possibly could. Even sometimes I'm talking about it, I'm like, bro, it is what it is, bro. Like, stop trying to like cover it up. It's trying to stop trying to refine the image, but when it, 
really, in reality, it is what it is. A lot of people leave the main line from the, to go to SNY because they don't want to indulge in the violence. But there's a lot of people that were on the main line that indulged in the violence just got tired of doing it for the next man. At least over here on the SNY, any violence that you conduct, you condone, that you engage with, is on your own accord. And you make the decision whether or not you want to stab this fool to death or you want to pick up a banger and catch more time. Instead of another man telling you when to do it, how to do it, and if you don't do it correctly, we're going to take your win for it. That's the only difference that I'm starting to see nowadays. Because right here is all the two fivers that were involved. So I'm going to talk while I place all these pictures across the screen because there's a lot of them. Maybe you guys can see their nicknames at the bottom and where they're from. But in this case, all the two fivers caught these Zapatistas slipping. Had him running, had him running for cover, which is a, it's a rare story. That's the best part I'm going to tell you about the story is that you ne I've never seen a, a Zapatista run. But mind you, there's been occasions where, you know, two fivers came out two or three deep and the Zapatistas were out there four deep, all with blades, all with bangers and overwhelmed the two fivers. But I never said once that the Zapatistas have always won the war. It's been a back and forth war. And I think it is just the battle of the eagles. The Zapatistas believe that two fivers are extortionists. They abuse the people. They hurt the people. But the Zapatistas have also, throughout time, became the same concept, the same narrative, and same oppression that they were once against. Now it's just all about internal politics, SMY politics, dirty politics, politicking on each other. But they're, they've been consistent with going to war with the two fivers on a consistent basis year after year. And to me, it's because I honestly believe the two fivers, they're always going to be deep. They're always going to be big, bro. A lot of these dudes that leave the main line go to SNY and realize that the two fivers have, you know, band together as people from Southern California, minorities from up north and, you know, Filipinos, others, Samoans, whites. But a vast majority are from Southern California and it is their ideal thing to stick together. And still be that brotherhood just without the big homies telling them what to do. Or without a mesero telling them what to do. They got rid of dirty politics, but it's still their own dirty politics. But it doesn't matter. Even though they do promote dirty politics and, and you know, backdoor each other a lot. They do have the biggest numbers on the SNY. And I'm talking about hundreds of them. Every yard you're going to see hundreds of them deep. I've seen so many pictures. And I can't tell you guys their Instagram accounts and their TikTok accounts. But believe me when I tell you this, on social media, they're displaying it. On social media, they are very out there. On social media, in the, the pictures that I've seen of them on the streets, they are deep. Gatherers having their meetings or gathering around or recruiting from within. I've, I've heard about, you know, SNY gangs in Salinas. I heard about SNY gangs in Verdugo. The main, the, one of the biggest names I keep hearing about Verdugo is that dude, what, Chucky Hernandez? The one that be robbing all the casitas and robbing all the big homies and shooting everybody up. I still need to find out more about him before I can do a profile on him. Everybody keeps asking me about him. I don't think it's the Chucky Barra that I know from the from the SNY, to be honest with you. But somewhere in these pictures, you're going to see, you know, a crate full of weapons. So, I guess you could say with this video, I'm trying to show you that violence exists in prison no matter what side you're on. No matter where it is that you're doing it from. Actives on the main line want to believe that they're the only violent groups, that they're the only ones doing it. As if their violence against their own people is justifiable as opposed to an SNY committing violence for whatever reason, whether it's on its own, whether it's a gang war, whether it's a, a sexo or, or a pedo. It's funny how I hear that narrative. Actives always trying to put down like all SNYs, man. To be honest with you, that's just a bunch of men over there. You put a man in a position where he has to defend himself and use a weapon, he's going to use a weapon in prison. And to be honest with you, mainline, yeah, they're taking win. So I, I'm starting to see the same level of violence on both sides. Now, mind you, when I went to SNY, my first week there, I seen Zapatistas remove one of their own. I didn't think much of it. I was like, eh, okay, so there's going to be some fights here and there, you know, some one-on-ones here and there. Everybody's throwing putazos cada dia, like that old school song. I don't know the name of the song. Meta with some bottles will be launched to a pandilla. And that's all I remember, those two bars. So, name this, name that song by any chance for those that are watching. I don't know the name of that song. I always wanted to hear it. I just, one of my cells used to repeat it, so I repeated it. And then, I seen the two fivers kick it off. Jump one of their own at, uh, going to uh, pill call. Didn't even get caught, but jumped them pretty bad. Just beat them up bad right in front of me and the homie. And then I wound up committing some violence. And then, year after year, I seen so much violence on the S line, I... 
it, it, it took me a while for it to register. I'm like, man, bro, like, that's all we do over here is fight. All we do is stab each other for dope and for pruno and for, for dirty politics. Until about when I got to Tehachapi in 2015 and I politicked my worst there as a writer. And I seen how politics can really get and how dirty they really can get on the SNY. But to me, when you take a step back and look at it, you know, just because you're a mainliner and you're willing to use a weapon and they kill people left and right, people die on the SNY too. So I'm starting to see no different. And people all over social media and all over YouTube, you know, you are, you're always going to see the same comments and the same narrative. Actives will never understand the ones that choose to be biased, why people go from the mainline to the SNY commit the same level of violence. But they weren't doing it on the SNY. You don't know that they weren't doing it on the SNY. Maybe they just didn't want to do it for you and the big homie that you worship. You know, like Jesus, you know, you're willing to wash his feet. That's just the... That's just the cold reality of it is. It's just there's violence on both sides. But prison ain't a place to be. In the beginning of my YouTube channel, I try to justify the SNYs like crazy. Realize that I sounded dumb as hell even when I got backdoored all over social media. And I displayed that for you guys to show you how stupid it really is. But it's a trip that when I went to SNY, I was thinking just like everybody on social media. Man, these fools ain't doing nothing. They're just, you know, slap boxing. So I started seeing murder after murder after murder after, after bodies, after GBIs, after, you know, people taking out their cellies. I was like, bro, it doesn't even matter. SNY, mainline, bro, if, if somebody wants you dead, you're going to be dead. It doesn't. Politics don't really dictate the level of violence that a man can exert on the next man if he chooses to. You don't have to be active or SNY. There's people out here that are regular civilians, bro. You break into their house, man, they're going to def the self-defense, bro. They're going to blow your wig off and beat the case. It's, it's just what you do to a man to get him to that point to want to really exert violence or believing that violence will solve its problem. So in the beginning, yes, I was trying to justify SNY. Now, I just reached a point now, like, I talk about the main line and I talk about the SNY. I'm always going to stand firm that SNY politics are far more dirtier than mainline politics. Even though mainline politics are happening real severe and we're starting to see like a body every week, SNY politics, bro, you'll never see it coming because most of the time you could be in the right for what you're doing. And still somebody is going to try to justify that as you're in the wrong and still take your win for it. So both sides are violent and I'd prefer to have the kids stay out of prison altogether as opposed to trying to choose a side or trying to justify a side. Violence ain't the place to be, man. It's just a waste of time. It's a waste of life. That's got to be probably one of the worst feelings in the world is to lose your life in prison while you were still looking forward to going home. It's a crazy story, right? So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.